warm welcome to you all. Glad to see you here at UC Berkeley School of Law. Uh, my name is Ken Bamberger, and I am the faculty director of the Berkeley Institute for Jewish Law and Israel Studies, uh, as well as a professor here at the law school. Before we start, a few announcements about really excellent upcoming events. Uh, there are two more public events uh, coming up uh, that the Institute is organizing and sponsoring in April. Brochures for both are on the tables outside. The first is Wednesday, April 22nd, where Derek Penslar, history professor at University of Toronto and at Oxford, uh, is speaking on his uh, new project on Theodor Herzl called Between Honor and Authenticity, Zionism as Theodor Herzl's Life Project. And that'll be in the room we just had the reception in it, uh, reception at 5 and lecture at 5.30. The following week is really an extraordinary event here at UC Berkeley. A conference organized jointly between the Center for Jewish Studies and the Berkeley Institute for Jewish Law and Israel Studies with co-sponsorship from the History Department and the Law School and the Human Rights Project, the Center for Human Rights, uh, the Jewish Students Union, and I know I'm forgetting somebody, uh, and, and the Magnus Collection for Jewish Art and Life, uh, and uh, sponsored generously by the Joseph and Ida Pell Endowed Fund for Jewish Studies. It's a conference on the 70th anniversary of the Nuremberg Trials called Reflections on the Legacy of Nuremberg. It'll be a day and a half conference starting uh, on the night of April 27th where there'll be a film with uh, original documentary film from the trials that was just put together by the daughter of the original filmmaker in a documentary, and she will be there to speak. And then a full day conference on the 28th with historians, legal scholars, ethicists, thinkers on the Holocaust, speaking about the meaning of Nuremberg through all of those lenses. And finally, on the evening of the 28th, will be the keynote address this year's 2015 Pell Lecture, given by Justice Rosalie Abella of the Supreme Court of Canada, the first Jewish woman uh, appointed to the Supreme Court of Canada, uh, born in a DP camp uh, after the war, and uh, will come and bring together her own personal experiences and her legal commitment to justice. And if you've never heard her speak, she really is an extraordinary person and an extraordinary speaker. So I encourage you to come. Uh, and the information on that and registration is outside. And now to today. Uh, he will be announced, he'll, he'll be introduced more deeply, but I just want to say what a pleasure it is for us uh, at Berkeley to have Rabbi Dahan with us. Thank you for coming and spending your days with us and sharing your thoughts. And I'll now turn the microphone over uh, after a short introduction to my colleague, Laura Maya Lee. Professor Maya Lee is the Lloyd Robbins Professor of Law, the director of our Comparative Legal Studies program here at the Law School, and director of the Robbins Religious and Civil Law Collection. Uh, he received his degrees at Montpellier, uh, and he, in 1997, was elected to the chair in Roman Christianity and Sources of Modern Law at the École Pratique des Hautes Études at the Sorbonne in Paris, where he continues to hold that chair as well. Uh, he is a featured speaker at universities throughout Europe, the United States, and Africa. Uh, and let me say for a moment a word about the Robbins Collection. Some of you may be familiar with the Robbins Collection through the work here uh, at the law school, uh, and also the wonderful set of collaborations that the Berkeley Institute has had over the years with the Robbins Collection. The Robbins Collection holds one of the country's uh, major collections on comparative legal and historical studies, and especially religious studies, and has a, an absolutely special 
uh, Jewish law collection that is really at the core uh, of its collection and of what the law school does. So I couldn't be more pleased that our collaborations together continue today. And I ask you please extend a warm welcome to uh, Professor Miley. It's a great pleasure and a privilege to welcome uh, Rabbi Daniel Dahan here in Berkeley. It is his first visit to California and to the United States. And uh, I feel privileged that uh, he could find the time in a period uh, which is uh, usually very busy uh, to come here just for a few days. He is leaving, he arrived yesterday and he will leave on Wednesday. Uh, Rabbi Dan graduated from the French Rabbinic School and continued his studies, rabbinic studies in Israel. In 1994, he received a graduate degree from the uh, Ecole Pratique de Institute <laughs> in the section of the Religious Science, Sciences Religieuses. And uh, in uh, 2013, uh, he did a PhD in law at the University of Aix-en-Provence not knowing that he will one day become his chief rabbi. <laughs> um, and uh, out of this uh, dissertation, uh, Summa Cum Laude, uh, a book was uh, uh, published on uh, Agunot, the injured woman, if I could translate it, with Farm uh, which has then established him as an expert, uh, widely consulted on these issues. He's working actually also with the French uh, chief, the chief rabbi of France on, on these issues. Uh, but besides then his uh, university career, uh, Ra chief rabbi Dan started first as rabbi of Fontainebleau in 1993, <laughs> and then was appointed chief rabbi of Nancy and the Lorraine region, region in 1994. Uh, and he was then chief rabbi in Nancy for 20 years. 21, uh, yeah. And just a few months ago, in the fall of 2014, uh, he was then asked then to accept the appointment of Chief Rabbi of Aix-en-Provence with some responsibilities on the Provence regions. Today, uh, Rabbi Dahan uh, will talk to us about then uh, Jews and Judaism in France today, but also looking at it from an historical perspective on the past, present, and the future. Please join me in welcoming Rabbi Dan. Do you need the mic? No, I don't need it. So, thanks uh, to Professor Laurent Mayali and to uh, Ken Bonberger and uh, Rebecca Goldberg. Where is Rebecca? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, for the invitation. When uh, Laurie Mayali asked me six months ago to speak about the situation of... Uh, you heard me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, about the situation of the Jews in France, you didn't think that uh, the terrible events will be coming in France two months later. So, the title of this conference is Jews and Judaism in France Today. And I wrote to the end of 2000 years story. It's a question. <coughs> so what happened? I took this picture in Aix-en-Provence the last week. You can see the synagogue and uh, the... Do you have the, a printer? You don't have. On n'a pas un printer? Dommage. <laughs> okay. Uh, with the finger. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is it in English? I think so, yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hope to. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> you need it. <laughs> I don't want to hurt. <laughs> okay. So, in the... In the... Uh, just a minute. In this part, uh, you can see a French soldier, yeah? yeah. Do you see? Uh, yes. Okay. It is 
in front of the community center of Aix-en-Provence. And near the community center, you have the synagogue and you see another soldier. You have soldiers in front of all the community centers, Jewish school, synagogue, all over the France, each day, all over the day, in the night also, and it costs to the French government one million euro per day. It's one, one million euro, like one million dollar, you can tell it. It's a lot. It's happening from the Charlie Hebdo or Hyper Cacher Vincennes from the uh, two months ago, the attacks of two months ago. So you have to, to do a flashback, to make a flashback and to understand what happened to this. We are, we are in this situation, this terrible situation. Charlie Hebdo, January 7, Hyper Cacher, Port de Vincennes, January 10, and two centuries ago, the creation of the Consistoire by Napoleon I, the beginning of the organization of the French Jewry. All aware, the 19th century, the, uh, the, Jewry, the French Jewry organized aim that, uh, 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 itself, and it was a long story, a lower story with France, because France, it is a state of the declaration of the right of the man. It is the first state in the, in the story of the, of the world. And for the Jews, it was a loving story. But you have to understand that in front of this, you have problems, a lot of problems. In uh, the end of the 19th century, the first shock was for the community, the arriving of the people, Jewish people, coming from the Eastern Europe. These people were more religious, more, <coughs> more involved in the Judaism, and for an assimilated community like the French Jewry, they call themselves not Jews, but Israelite. If you, it's different, because when you say Israelite, you say something less religious, Le more French and more French and less Jews. You know, like uh, Français de confession mosaïque. French was mosaic confession, if you can, if you can translate like this. At the end of the 19th century came the first problem, the Dreyfus effort. This captain, this officer of the French army uh, accused to be a uh, uh, sorry? A spine, yeah, for the Germany. And uh, he was considered uh, uh, as guilty by the French justice. And in 1898, he was in the front of uh, all the population, in the core mili militaire, in the military corps in, the, in front of Paris. <laughs> the people said murder to the Jews, more aux Juifs. And one man was present at this event. His name was Theodor Herzl. He was a newspaper, uh, uh, he was a journalist for an uh, uh, Australian newspaper, the New Free Press. Uh, in uh, English you can say the New Free Press from Vienna in Austria. And in a few days, in his hotel in Paris, he wrote his book, his famous book, The Judenstaat. The Judenstaat is the state of the Jews. Not the Jewish state, but the state of the Jews. It's a big difference. We can speak about this later if you want. After these terrible stories, and all the friends were divided in two parties, for the refus or against the refus. And he caused the separation between the church, which was all the religious corporations, and between the French state. And uh, in 19, uh, in uh, uh, 1905, it was the law, separation de l'église et de l'état. Uh, uh, you separate the uh, church, the old religious cops, uh, Protestants, 
Catholic and Jews also from the, uh, from the state. The state do not pay the rabbis, the, the Catholic priests and the pastors also. And uh, Muslim you don't have in France at this time. And uh, it was terrible and it was a large period of anti-Semitic. You know, for example, in the election for the French parliament in 1998, in the time of Dreyfus Afrot, uh, uh, you have uh, people who want to be uh, deputy at the French parliament. The program was only anti-Juif, against Jews. That's all. Not about economy, not about uh, politics, no, against Jews. And they were elected, in, uh, especially in Algeria, a uh, French department, Re uh, um, what was his name? Regis. Sorry? I, re no, the, the brave was later. <laughs> and his life, I think so. Uh, Max Regis. Max Regis was elected as mayor of Algiers, the capital of Algeria, and deputy at the French parliament. And this program was anti juif against Jews. So you can imagine the how oh, terrible was for the Jews the life at this time. And came the First World War. And the First World War was, how can I say it? L'Union Sacrée, we say in France. L'association of all the French over, parti over participation of a religious con uh, appartenance. Uh, you have no Jews, no Protestant, no agnostic, no Catholics. You have only French citizens. Or not French citizens who decided to fight for the liberty or for the friends. But between the two world war, it was a terrific period. And uh, all the extreme right, extreme droit, <coughs> went and it was terrible about against Jews. In 1936, Leon Blum, the famous political leader of the Socialist Party, became the first Jew French Prime Minister. It was not so easy. Not for him and not for the Jewish population. In 1938, you have the Kristallnacht in November in Germany. It was close to the breaking of the Second World War. French Rabbinical Congress in 1939, I think so, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Just a minute. And in 1940, it was a disaster. The disaster was because the German army conquered France in a few weeks. And the new government is led by Philippe Pétain. It is the beginning of the collaboration between the Nazis and the Vichy the name of the new capital of France. You have to understand that with the collaboration of French government and French police, a quarter of the Jewish population was deported, was murdered in the Eastern Europe. And it was terrible for the population, the Jewish population of France. We have maybe 300,000 Jews in 1939. After the war, 76,000 Jews were deported and maybe 2,500 came back in France. After the Second World War, you have a new world. First, the community created new institution, CRIF. Now you call it Conseil Représentatif des, institu des Institutions Juives de France. But in the beginning, it was in the middle of the war, they call it Conseil Représentatif des Israelites de France. And you know that it's a new, new world. 
After the war in 1949, they created the Fonds Social Juif Unifié to manage all the collection of the money for Israel or for the French community. In 1948, it is the State of Israel, the Declaration of Independence. And for the French community, it's something new becoming. But the better is after. You are see Jews of Morocco, of Arabic peoples who are leading, living up. Uh, it's the Sultan Mohammed V and the young Prince Hassan, the next for, uh, uh, King Hassan II. And the times from 1956, it is the independence of Morocco. In 1966, it was the independence of Morocco of Tunisia. In 1972, the independence of Algeria. In maybe 10 years, 300,000 300, Jews came in France. And the, do, the, and the doubling the population of the, of the, uh, of the French Avery. They are more involved in their identity. They are Jews and not yet Israelites. The community has to build new, new community centers, new synagogues, to more, we more involved to develop the cash route. All things they ignore for the uh, uh, last uh, 50 years ago. In 1967, it is a, Oh, independence of Tunisia, Nasser, the Jews from, from Egypt was ex expulsed, Nasser, Algeria, you can see, six day war, six days war in 1967, a great enthusiasm all over the rich world and especially in France. But a part of the community leaders and thinkers of France made Aliyah. They decided to go to Israel. In 1973, it is, oh, first, second shock. French President Charles de Gaulle, after the Six Day Wars, he, he said in the press conference, un peuple sœur de lui-même et dominateur, about the Jewish people. It was a big shock for the community, and Tim, he was a caricaturist, he, he, made, he made this picture, and you see a Jew very, very hard, strongly, but in the concentration camp. Yom Kippur in 1973, and uh, a terrible shock. All over the Jewish world, all the Jewish world are afraid about Israel. In 1977, in the French newspaper L'Express, Darquet de Pelpois, who was the general secretary of Jewish affairs in the Jewish in the uh, Vichy government, said, "At Auschwitz, we got only slices." A terrible sentence. In, 90, in Camp David, you see the. <coughs> ah, okay. Rue Copernic, the first attack after the World War, who the French Jew Jewish community suffered. It was in October 3, 1980. After this attack, the community decided to create the SPCJ, Service de Protection de la Communauté Juive, in association with the French police, to protect all the community buildings, synagogues, community centers, all Jewish things. And two years later, just after the first Lebanon war, you have the terrible attack of Rue des Rosiers at uh, the restaurant of Zirgenberg. Delicatessen, not kosher, but Jewish. <laughs> I have to tell it, I apologize. <laughs> I am a rabbi also. <laughs> Rue des Rosiers, 
Jules Goldenberg, it was a terrible attack. You see? Uh, I read in the fr in French newspaper the last week, it was in Cholamouet Pessar, that the French justice asked a Canadian justice to extract a man suspect to be one of the authors of this terrible attack of Rue des It may, may be 32 years later, mm. but the justice is passing. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> it will hope that it will be... It was terrible. It was a shock. You know, at 1982, it was the end of the Palestinian terrorism. And for maybe more than 10 years, maybe the Jewish community were a little bit quiet. We think that uh, we have uh, an experience, an hope in France. But in 1995, beginning the Islamist, terrori the Islamist terrorist, coming from Algeria, the first was here in Paris, attacks in Paris, but they also try to, yeah, here you see French, French president just elect Jacques Chirac at this time. Just a minute. And it was at the beginning of the Islamist terrorists. You know, from this time, we began a very, very difficult period for the Jewish community in France. And after this, you suffer from three terrible events. The first, in 26, Ilan Alimi, the young boy, the young Jewish boy, the, he was wrapped by uh, gangsters and was uh, tortured for 24 days. I, unfortunately, I knew the story from the beginning because you know, maybe you don't know it. But uh, you, the police was connected with a rabbi in Paris at this time, because this rabbi gave his visit card to Ilan Alimi a few days ago. And uh, when the rabbi saw, saw this number, and they saw he is a rabbi, so they called to the rabbi and told him, you know, you have to, to tell to the family that if they want to, to see their son in life, they have to pay a lot of money, money they don't have because they are not, they are modest person, they don't have the, this money. This rabbi was one of my best friends. And I remember that at this period, one Saturday night, very, very late, maybe it was uh, 1 a.m. I received, I was a uh, get up. <laughs> I received a phone uh, 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 a call from him, and he was, you know, shocked. He told me it was in the beginning of this affair, and he told me you can't imagine what's happening. I don't know what really it's happening, but it's a terrible affair. It is terrible because you have a big problem with your young boy from the community, and they ask a lot of money, and you don't know what happened. And when the officer realized that the people, the families, they don't have the money they need. They kill him, but they kill him, it was terrible. 24 days. Ilan Alimi. And the population, the French population, didn't react about this. Three years later, in Toulouse and Montauban, uh, this is Ilan Alimi. <coughs> terrible in front of newspaper, Jonathan Sandler and his two young boys, and Miriam Mosonego, and also 
two non-Jewish soldiers, Muslim. They were killed by Mohammed Mira. And it was terrible because when in the school of France, or were France, the French government asked all the children to make one minute silence. A lot, a lot. Too much of the children coming from the North African immigration refused to make this minute of silence. Asking that, you know, the poor Palestinian children, they are killed by the terrible Israeli soldiers. Incredible. Mia Monsenego was seven years old. And when she saw this horrible man running after her, she ran to escape. And what did he do? He ran after this young children. This young child. And he take, took her by, his, by, by, by her. And he fight with his gun, without a mission. Otsara <coughs> Torah, Toulouse, after the events. And you can see, in a city in France, maybe you can translate it. You need the micro? Maybe. I feel a bit vacances. You were a pride knight of Islam. You fought the Zionist shit and the false Muslim. The false Muslim, the false Muslim. The false, the false Muslim. Uh, you were uh, that's poor French, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you died with the, the weapons in your hands. I salute you, Mohammed, my brother, my friend. May you rest in peace. With that commentaries. And here we have the statistics from the last months. And after this, you have the Jewish Museum at Brussels, the last year. And unfortunately, this year, Charlie Hebdo, the press, and the Jews. And you can realize at all times, the terrorist attacks all the symbols of the democratic state. The police, the army, the school, the press, the liberty, the freedom, the equality, but you are only on time coming back the same Jewish community. In the school, at Toulouse, Ilan Alimi, as a simple person, in the kosher grocery at the Port de Vincennes. And you can understand that uh, a lot of the community in France is afraid about this. They suffer. You know that in suburbs of Paris and in Marseille, Jewish children are not coming to the public school because they suffer from, from uh, many things. So the par their parents decided to put him in a private school. They have no choice. I was in Israel three months ago. And it was the first time I took a flight from Marseille to Israel. And in the plane, 20 families from Marseille made Aliyah to Israel. And you have to understand what Aliyah does mean. It is an spiritual advances. You want to, to go to 
the land of your ancestors, to live like a Jew, a religious Jew, or maybe you are going to Israel to be in security because you are afraid in your, in your country. If you made Aliyah, if you make Aliyah by idealism, it's good. But if you, made Aliyah, if you make Aliyah because you are afraid, it could be very bad. And uh, you have few problems now in the Jewish community. First, that in old communities, you have circles. You have a little circles of people re-involved in the life of the community. And for the, for the first the little circle, they are the more involved. They are coming in the service each day. <laughs> they are the best donors. They are involved in all the life of the community. This part of this community of the community are the first part making Aliyah. The second circle are making Aliyah also. And no, the big, the big problem for the French Jewry for the next years is that you have to make the same thing, to offer the same service, maybe in the same quality, maybe in the best quality, but with less money and less people. And maybe it's a good thing. Maybe you have to go after Jews who are not looking about, the, about them in the normal time. Because the life, you don't have the, the time to, to look about other people. No, you need to, have to, 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 to run after people. You didn't run after them for many years. Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's a good thing for the Jewish community. Maybe it's a good thing for the French Jewry. But I'm sure for one thing that we are not to be afraid. Like the new French rabbi, or French chief rabbi elected, Chaim Garcia, told to the community a few months ago after his election, don't be afraid. You have to be French Jewry like we were for the many, many years. We have an hope, we have an hope in France. We are not living the same event, events like in the Second World War. Because in the Second World War, the government was anti-Semitic. Now you are the chance that the government of France, for the last uh, 10, 15 years, we were also very, very involved to the protection of the Jewish community. They are against anti-Semitic. But we have another problem, a new problem. You have two new problems in France. The first is a is a position of a part of the Muslim community. The first problem. And the second problem is the, how can I say it? The new, the new form of the extreme right French party, Front National, of Marine Le Pen. And so you have to know that for a lesson, comment dire un sondage? Someone? Paul. Paul. We see that 20% of the Jewish population could elect a member of the Front National for the new, first, for the new, for the, for the elections uh, for the, in, in the, in the few years. It's terrible because if Jews decided to to work for this population, for Front National, mm -hmm. it will be mean that they are not afraid of extreme right, and they are more afraid of Muslim from the extreme right, but it's not a good idea. I don't think so. So you have problem. 
you have hopes, you have maybe the process, uh, solutions, you have maybe problems, and uh, thanks for you. Okay. Uh, I'm apologize because I'm very, very tired. You can imagine. I didn't sleep for maybe two days. <laughs> it's incredible. Ça va, ça a été? Il n'y a pas les commentaires. C'est pas vrai. Je me rends pas compte. Il n'y a pas les si longtemps. Some questions, yeah. I have two completely unrelated questions. Excuse me. Vous restez à côté de moi parce que là, j'ai besoin. I thought I had a classroom voice. Uh, when you said un peu plus sûr de lui-même et dominateur, a quote of Charles de Gaulle, yeah. you said the people were shocked. Yeah. You the Jewish people. Because they assumed that this was anti-Semitic on the part of Charles de Gaulle? Uh, quite. You know, and, uh, you he, he, and, and the when the chief... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. People sure of themselves and dominating. 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 A, 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 a sentence very chalk. Uh, this sentence choked a lot the Jewish population in France. You know, it was only 22 years after the end of the Second World War. And on one side, Charles de Gaulle <laughs> was not suspected to be an anti Semitic. You know, when the chief rabbi of France. Uh, uh, Jacob Kaplan came quickly after this sentence of Charles de Gaulle. The first thing he, he told him, Monsieur le Grand Rabbin, uh, Chief Rabbi, how oh, can you think that I am an anti-Semitic man? Hmm. He was shocked, but he didn't realize maybe that this sentence was very strong for the Jewish community, 22 years after the uh, the end of the Second World War. You have to understand that the French Jewry suffer a lot of the French state's uh, uh, laws in the Second World War. It takes a lot of time for the, Jew for the uh, French government to recognize the responsibility of French government and po uh, French police to the deport in the deportation of uh, as for uh, 76,000 Jews of France. It's a lot. It was only in 1995 by the public declaration, declaration of Jacques Chirac. Only 40 years after the Second World War. You know, he was the first. Okay? Yes, my other question was after, ah. the, <laughs> after the liberation of the, uh, or the independence of the North African countries, yeah. did most of the Jews go to France or to Israel? You know, it depends from which, uh, it's a good question, it depends from which uh, 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 country. I will explain you uh, in, in, in quickly. Morocco and Tunisia was not really France. It was a protectorate, not a colony, not really French. Algeria was French department, three French departments, Oran, Alger, Constantine, and at the end of the uh, uh, French domination in Algeria, Département des Oasis, it was four departments in Algeria. So for the Algerian population, we can say that maybe 90% came straight to France. From Morocco, in Tunisia, it was different. A large part of Tunisian population came to France, but, you know, depended the events after the independence, after the Bizot affair, you know what is the Bizot affair? In 61, it was, Bizot was a, 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 a port de guerre, c'était un, comment? Military port. A military port uh, that France have the possession and the French, uh, um, Tunisian government asked French to, uh, government to give them back because it was in the Tunisian uh, 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 territory and uh, because of this it's uh, breaking out a lot of uh, problems and like 
all the Jewish history, when you have a problem between two governments, we p who pay in first? Jewish population. Yes. So after this, and after the Six Day Wars in 77, 67, and after the Kippur, Yom Kippur War in 73, and after the Lebanon War in, nine, in 82, all these events all over the world provoked the emigration of a part of the Jewish population. No, in North Africa, you can even have maybe a little community in Tunisia, in Tunis, maybe uh, less than a thousand people. In Algeria, you have maybe not a community also. It was a community in Algeria, but uh, maybe you have few Jews. And in Morocco, you have a community in Casablanca. 2,000, 2,500 uh, uh, maybe Jews in all Morocco. And imagine that in the independence of Morocco in 1956, you have, you had, uh, if I do not made a mistake, maybe 2,000, 200,000 Jews. So the most important community, Jewish community in North Africa. Oh, also, uh, something very interesting. You know, in the Wannsee Protocol in 1942, in the suburb of Berlin, when the Nazis decided to murder all the Jewish population of Europe and the world, uh, they wrote the population of each country. What do you think they wrote for the Jewish population of France? How much? You have an idea? They wrote 800,000 uh, Jews. But it's not true, because in the French territory lived only 300,000 Jews. What happened? Because they, <laughs> they included the Jewish population of Morocco, <laughs> Algeria, and Tunisia. So you can imagine what happened if uh, the torch operation wasn't declined in November 1942 to liberate uh, Morocco and Algeria by the, by, by the uh, 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 Britain and American troops. You can imagine what will happen. And they, and they tried to deport Jews from Tunisia. They began to do it. Some Jews from Tunisia were deported straight from Tunisia to Auschwitz. Few Jews. Yeah. Hi, thank you so much for coming to Berkeley and speaking with us. I'm right here. Oh, okay, excuse me. <laughs> I am uh, dreaming a little, excuse me. <laughs> so, like, I, maybe I have to stand up because, like, I, I'm. Yeah, better oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, like, like, no doubt many people in this room, I am the daughter of a French Jewish refugee who came during the war. First during the war or after the war? Uh, in 42, but... 42 in during the war? Yes. Oh. But, uh, first of all, Berkeley's a really great place to be Jewish. A lot of folks know that. But uh, my question for you is about maybe some... Is there any good news in the story? The way the Ebdo... Um, aftermath was reported in the United States, we saw huge demonstrations in the streets of Paris and other cities in France with a lot of, it appeared to show a lot of solidarity among sort of the average person in France with Jews. Signs that said, I am I am a Jew, or Jewish, or I am Saudi, or, or whatever. But you know... So, so my question is, ah, okay. what do you think of that? Is there actually something positive here? Did the negative events actually show something about France that is a good thing? Okay. If I understand well your question, it's a good question. Like the chief rabbi of France said at the French television, even if you don't have Charlie Hebdo, and you, have, and you had only the hyper cacher attack, maybe the French population didn't react like she, she, uh, like she reacted. Mm -hmm. 
And it is a big problem, you know, because after Ilan Alimi, the French population didn't react. After Mohamed Mera in Toulouse and Montebo, the French population didn't react. And you have to have to the, the, the fight against uh, the press, against Charlie Hebdo. Do you know what is Charlie Hebdo? Yes. I, yeah, it's, yeah, you know, okay, you, you have a sentence in, in, in Judaism that after the dead, you don't speak against people, yeah? After the dead, all people are well, are, 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 are well person, but really, well, in, in reality, Chari Abdo was a provocative journal. In my life, I didn't, uh, bought, I didn't buy the Chari Abdo newspaper, and I, you too? Yeah? Uh, One time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, okay. You are not Jew, but you have also Yom Kippur. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, okay. At school, at, uh, when you have 15, a teenager, okay. <laughs> it's okay. But imagine maybe 50,000 people were reading Charlie Hebdo before this event. Okay. It's, it's nothing, Charlie Hebdo. But it represents a lot of things because it represents the liberty to think what do you want, to say what do you want, to do what do you want. It is the, the, the foundation of the democracy. And instead you can imagine it, what, what, what does it represent. And we, it is one of the big problems that you have in France, that you have the, the right to think what do you want. I am French, I am Jew. And you know, uh, today I was in the, uh, at the service in the in synagogue in Berkeley, and people said to me, "What are you doing in France? Make you Aliyah go to Israel." And my family in Israel told me, "Go in Israel. What are you doing in France?" And I want to told you, like I told them, I'm not afraid. And I don't want to go in Israel because I am afraid. Because if I, go, if I do it, it is the victory of the terrorism. And I have, do, I have not the right to do it. I have a responsibility. One of my teachers told us many times, to be Jew is to be a responsible. To be a rabbi is to be responsible. And, to, and for me, to be a rabbi, as I, have respons I have responsibility. Not responsibility, not to, to go out of France because I am afraid. I am not afraid. Because im if I am afraid, <coughs> it is a victory of the terrorism. So, Rabbi, on that last... Uh, oh, Noah, uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> but just to follow up on your last comment. Yeah. Um, I, I you told me this morning why, uh, what I am doing here. Yeah. Oh <laughs> no, God. not in States, in France. <laughs> but you are, not the, the, you are not alone, don't worry. Okay. So, I admit, I'm the one who said it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that I remember uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu coming to France yeah. after the massacre at the at the store. Yeah. And he was promoting Aliyah, if I remember correctly. You know. Uh, and so I just wanted to ask the, okay. the the position of the rabbinate in France. You as the chief rabbi and the other um, uh, members of the rabbinate are they? Um, Promoting Aliyah, certainly you sound like you're not promoting Aliyah if the person is leaving because they're concerned about their safety or their life. But I wonder, is there a general position? Because I remember the, you know, the uh, association in France, the Jewish Federation, was opposing okay. Netanyahu. Okay, it's a good question. You know, Prime Minister Netanyahu is in his role like a Prime Minister of Israel. Israel began for the safety of the Jewish population all over the world. You remember it? For the safety of the Jewish population all over the world. So, if the Prime Minister of Israel asks the population of a state to make Aliyah, it is normal. But it is normal also for the French deciders of the community, the French leaders, to think 
that maybe to make Aliyah because you are afraid not a good thing. If you ask me, do I, made Aliyah, do I have to make Aliyah? I will tell you, you are responsible of your life. And you have to think about a lot of things. Things that the past year, 7,000 Jews made Aliyah from France to Israel. But the statistic also quotes that a large part of people making Aliyah are coming back. <laughs> are, coming, are coming back in France, are coming back in States, are coming back in England. Because, you know, to be Jew is beautiful, like you told. Like you said, yeah? To be Jew is beautiful, but it's very hard also. <laughs> And Israel, it is a proof that to be Jew is beautiful, which is hard also. It's very hard to live in Israel. You have to know it. If you don't know it, it's a dream. And while you are dreaming, maybe you have to, to stand up and to realize that you are not living in a dream, but in the reality. So imagine that if you are making Aliyah because it is an ideal, you want to be in association of your way of life, to, li to, to live like a religious Jews, to be in a religious society, to, know have to, to, have, to don't have problem to, to eat kosher, to wear a kippah, to make Shabbos, on the it's okay, very nice. Do it, no, not tomorrow, no. But if, if you are afraid, Seeing that in Israel, in Israel also you have uh, many reasons to be afraid. You have war, you have terrorism, you have conscription, you have a lot of things. I was in Israel in August. The first day I came to my uh, sister house, she told me, okay, you know, it is uh, the room, if you hear something in the night, don't worry. Not be happy, but don't worry. You, ca you came from your bed. You get, you, 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 you get up from your bed. You are going uh, in this room. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> What's happening here? It's a, it is a war? Yes, yeah, it is a war. It was a war. <clears throat> so don't imagine that it's well as so ideal. It's very hard. But, but, but. I dream to live in Israel also. <laughs> but with the rising population, Muslim population in France, do you foresee more of an exodus of French Jews to Israel, number one? And number two, what do you foresee as the impact on France, of, um, on Israel, of, of all these French Jews? And as for their coming back, you know, they rent an apartment in Israel, then they come back. But, uh, but the question is, um, do you foresee more of an exodus being that the reality is that politically there's going to be more of an impact of the Muslims in France? You know, it's a good question, but I have not the answer. <laughs> Because uh, you have to see in the next years. I can give you enough so, uh, about this question. I'm not a prophet. I'm only a rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, uh, can, you, can you give him the, the micro, please? So? Ah. Ah, oui. You are French? Yeah. Oh, very nice. You are coming from? Paris. Paris, Paris? Paris, Paris. <laughs> Not the <laughs> suburb. <laughs> Quel arrondissement? <laughs> Quel arrondissement? In uh, close to uh, Créteil. Ah, okay. So, I born in France. I was in France. I Your France. name is? Jeremy. Jeremy? Sima. Sima, okay. I spent all my life in France, and it was my 
most beautiful years of my life. Okay, <laughs> very nice. When did you learn? Sorry? Where, where did you learn in Kretei? In the public school or in Jewish school? I was in a Jewish school. Uh, yeah. Otara Torah? No, Yavne. Ah, Yavne, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I went religiously. Yeah. And I would have been in France until three years ago. Okay. After all the events happened. Now you have just one question. After Toulouse, you came to, to Berkeley? I came after, I came in the US one year ago. Okay, what are you doing here? I am a student. Uh, oh, in the Faculty of Law? No, in entrepreneurship. Anthropology? Entrepreneurship. Oh, okay. Business school. Okay. Entrepreneurship. Okay. So, why should I... Very original. <laughs> from Tunis. My mother was born in Tunis. My father as well. Uh, Your father also? Yeah. Okay. All my family is in France right now. Right. They think about moving in Israel. Hey, they normal. <laughs> they are living in Crete. Yeah. yeah, okay, my daughter is also living in Crete. My grandson also is going to be in Crete. And my, my son-in-law and my daughter, they think a lot to, to make Aria. Okay, but what can I say? But it's not for the same thing, you know, because they want to make Aria because my, my son-in-law, my daughter, they told me, but dad, what future you have for our children in this country? It is a good question, okay? Oh, we have the same question. Why should I come back to France? Why not? You know... Why not? I, I will tell you, like I told him... No. Uh, just a minute. I, I will tell you, like I told you, like I told all, uh, 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 all the assistants before. If you have things to do in France, if you have things to to make in France entrepreneurial and something like this. And if you think that you have a possibility to, to live in France like a Jew, like a, a, a free man, come back in France. Because if you are living in France, it is a victory for the terrorism. Don't forget it. You will be free in France? I think I am. We served here in front of the synagogue? You know, you have also soldiers all over Israel. You know, you, you know, you know the, the prophet said, quote, C'est pesura Israel. Israel is like a, a, a lambel, a little lambel, you know? That all the... Comment dit les loups? Les loups. Les loups. That all the wolves want to eat. And the, all the walls of the world want to eat the little number of Israel. Israel like the Jewish population, not the state, in this, uh, in this uh, sentence. So it is your decision, it is your in, in your conscience, but maybe you have to, to make your life in, in states, maybe in Israel, maybe in Canada, maybe in Australia. But don't forget that uh, you will have, I not expect, but it's possible. The same problem all over the world. Because you are Jew. <laughs> yeah. No, right here. Ah, okay. Excuse me. Um, a few Trois questions. With the days after the uh, Charlie Hebdo and supermarket attacks, yeah. the Prime Minister Valls made an amazing speech. Amazing that speech. That everybody... Uh, around the world took note of, especially the Jewish community, yeah. when he said, uh, France without Jews is not France. He, and he's right. And he thinks really this. But it's not a problem of the French government, it's a problem of the French population. Yeah. <laughs> the question is, you have good... Did his speech have an impact on the French people the way it did in the Jewish world? Uh, yes, he, 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 has an, he had an impact at the, at the moment, at this day. But you know, it's like person who have a, a, a dead in this family, yeah? Okay? Uh, all the person who are coming to, to tell him, you know, he was a, a good person, you had a, you, 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 you think about, uh, you want to, um,
You want to help. You want to help person, okay, to support this person at this moment, but after you forget it. It is the same thing. The friend Jerry was very. It was very good for the friend Jerry. The 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 the, the, the speech of Emmanuel Vats at the par French Parliament. Very good speech. Maybe an, uh, one of the better speech about the Jewish community for the 20 years old ago. But, but the reality is like this. You know, I was in Aix-en-Provence, it is the uh, Cour d'Appel, it is a Supreme Court, a local Supreme Court, the mo Court of Appeal. It is the, the most important in France after Paris. And uh, one month ago was a meeting with uh, the attorneys of all the region, from Nice, from Daguignan, from, from Aix-en-Provence, from Marseille. At the beginning of the meeting, the attorney general of the Court d'Appel, of the Supreme Court uh, of uh, Aix-en-Provence, spoke about a Jew, a rabbi, who was injured in Marseille one day ago. The first thing, and natural, he asked me, Dear Chief Rabbi, can you speak about the Jewish community? What does the community feel at this time? So what can I say? That you have soldiers, that you are not living in security, that you feel that you have a lot of problems. But we know, what we know, that the French government supports us. But the French government is not the French population. And you have the most important Muslim population in Europe, in France. And this population, we have a large part of very good persons. And they suffer also from the extremism. But, 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 you have a big difference. You know, like a rabbi, in my congregation, if I want to say bad things in the synagogue, in the community, I will find, you know, like all Jewish communities, person who stand up and you, hey, rabbi, you exaggerate. Stop. The word Jewish chutzpah, yeah? You know it, huh? you, know, you know this word, yeah? <laughs> but in the Muslim world, it's not like this. If the imam says something bad, and, uh, and say that you have to kill Jews and to kill uh, French soldiers. Also, the person who are against this, who disapprove this uh, world, they will not say anything. But it's a big problem of the Muslim mm -hmm. population, not also in France, but all over the world. Mm -hmm. okay, any other question, but Rabbi Dan is a little bit tired, so maybe the, the last two questions. Okay. Uh, it, just as a preliminary matter, it's hard to imagine with France having the largest Jewish population in Europe that there would even be a discussion that the largest population would leave. But you, you started the, the talk today with this concept of, is this the end of French Jewry? C'est la provocation. You continued with a series of slides that were all negative. And your only answer was, and I agree with it, but the Jewish experience in the United States is vastly different from the Jewish experience. Yeah, you are not the, the same experience, yeah. Uh, but I agree that to, to leave France out of fear is not the way to do it. But yeah. you, you, starting with the Dreyfus affair and going throughout history, um, you know, in the last 125 years or so, uh, it was all negative. The only positive thing that you have said is just that the chief rabbi of France now says there is hope. That is it. You, you've repeatedly commented that the French population has not uh, stood in solidarity with the Jews. Uh, after this fantastic <laughs> speech <laughs> by the Prime Minister, uh, it made an impact for uh, a moment. 
uh, you haven't balanced it other with, with your own obstinance of saying, I refuse to leave until I'm ready and until I want to do so for my own, my own reasons. And again, I applaud that, but that is not consistent or that doesn't really satisfactorily answer the question that you posed at the beginning, which is, is, is this the end of French Jewry? And all of the evidence that you presented would suggest that, you know, there isn't much of a future. Good question. <laughs> and good analysis also. I will tell you, maybe we need support. Maybe we need to be support by all the Jewish population all over the world, and especially by the, the Jewish population of states. Because, you know, when you are living in, the, in this, this situation, you have two possibilities. The first possibility is to think that it's finished, you have to leave. And the second is, no, I have to fight. You know, the life is a fighting, but a good fighting. In French, you have a sentence, you say, la vie n'est pas à long fleuve tranquille. <laughs> it is a title of a movie also, <laughs> an author. But you see, you have to realize that Maybe I was a quite negative in my analysis of the French history for the, maybe the, the last uh, 100 years. But it was not also this. It was a big, big moment of, uh, what can I say, a positive of positive moments with the French population. And maybe you have not to forget that if three quarters of the Jewish population were saved in the Second World War, it was because the, f the French population wanted it. The French population resists to the bad laws of Vichy government. The French population decided to save the life of the Jews all over the French territory. <coughs> and a large part of them pay by the life, this thing. And we have not to forget it. So maybe I have to insist that French population, France is not anti-Semite. You have problem of anti-Semitism, it's right. You have big problems. It's right also, but you need to be to fight, and, indeed, and you need the support, to be support by all the Jewish population all over the world, and maybe especially by the Jewry of the United States of America. Okay. Thank you. Maybe a last question. One more question. Okay, the last because I am <laughs> finished. <laughs> <laughs> If you could say a little bit more about where Jews in general fit in the French society. And I wanted to give a little bit of a uh, sort of description of what the case is here. I've lived in this country for 46 years and I uh, was born and I grew up in Poland. My parents were Holocaust survivors. You born in Poland? Yeah. You don't like. <laughs> <laughs> you like so... <laughs> And uh, one of the things that is really very, changed very much in those years is that being Jewish has become more normal in this country. There are quite a number of Jews in Congress, in Senate, in the House of Representatives, on Supreme Court, in academia, uh, many comedians. Um, there are movies. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there, are, there are movies in which People are Jews, but the movie is not really because they are Jews and not really about Jews. They just happen to be Jews. So being Jewish has become something that is sort of your private matter, but you are part of the society at large. And I wonder what you, whether you can describe how that situation is in France. You know, you have a big difference between France and 
United States of America. Because it is in the culture of the, of the country. France is, in the beginning, a Catholic country. So Catholic maybe doesn't understand what all the culture, and especially Judaism, mean. They don't know about this. I will tell you, uh, it's not a joke, it's a real story. One time, a few years ago, uh, I came to a library, no, to a, uh, to a bookshop, to, to buy a, a new book about kosher food. In France, la nourriture kasher. But you know, when you write in French, kasher, it is like cachet. If you don't know about what you are speaking, you can't think that it's cachet, cachet in, in English. Is hidden. It? hidden. Yeah. It's not the same thing. So I ask, and uh, the book Sarah, she, she saw at uh, her laptop, and uh, you see the, the hidden food. <laughs> no, I, the nourriture cacher, <laughs> not the same thing. So she didn't know what I mean, uh, what I mean with cacher food. You know, when you are in America, people you speak about with, with, uh, about cacher, about Hanukkah, about Yom Kippur, they understand. The New York Stock Exchange is closed at Yom Kippur, not in Paris. It is a big difference. They, they, underst they understand that you have other cultures because it is an Anglo-Saxon Protestant country. It's not the same country, not the same culture. So it's different. But uh, you have many Jews at the parliament, at the Supreme Court. I know personally some of them. Many Jews involved in all worlds the French society, but, but it's not the same thing. And you know, a large part of the Nobel Prize of France were given to the hair by Jewish people. Here too, yeah. But here they recognize it. In France, it's different. Imagine that uh, maybe half of the Nobel Prize of Germany between the two world world were given by Jewish people. And they forget. So you know, life is so fragile. Life is so short. You have to, it's a fight. You have to fight, but a good fight. To fight to recognize the, the rights of the Jewish people to live as human, as a religious way of life. And maybe to recognize that Israel is a part of the identity of the Jewish people and also a part of the humanity. Thanks of all.